ABC Alaska News at 10 with Stevie French on ABC Network Statewide. Ahead on ABC Alaska News at 10, your Alaska link. A search and rescue effort is underway for a man from the valley who fell overboard near the port of Anchorage. And a controversial mining project begins layoffs after an investor pulls out. Then, could the government shutdown have a massive, massive impact on local crabbers and the entire crab season? These stories and more coming up right now. You're watching ABC Alaska News at 10 with your Alaska Link News Team with Stevie French, Ryan Overton with your forecast, and John Thompson with sports. ABC Alaska News at 10 starts now. Good evening, I'm Stevie French. Thank you for joining us tonight. The joint agency search and rescue effort for a 28-year-old Wasilla man who fell overboard near the port of Anchorage around midnight last night has been called off. ABC Alaska's Michelle White has more on this story. Peter McNeil, a 28-year-old Wasilla man, fell overboard into the icy waters near the port of Anchorage around midnight last night. Initial reports were that he was not wearing a life jacket. He reportedly slipped and fell off of a skiff while being transported to a tugboat. About 50 responders from the U.S. Coast Guard Sector Anchorage, Alaska State Troopers, Alaska Air National Guard, and Anchorage Fire and Police Departments are conducting the search and rescue effort. We have multiple assets searching right now. We have a Coast Guard rescue helicopter based in Kodiak. Alaska State Trooper helicopter based in Anchorage. We have an Anchorage Fire Department rescue boat and two Anchorage Fire Department jet skis actively searching for, for the person in the water. A 110-foot Coast Guard vessel is also en route from Seward and should be arriving early Monday evening to assist in the search. One of the biggest challenges with the search is that the extreme tidal range here in Anchorage, um, which produces extremely strong currents. Those currents will affect the search, says Decker, moving a person in the water down Cook Inlet when the tide is out and back into Cook Inlet when the tide is in. We have computer models and we have programs available to us that tell us, one, what the tide is doing and what a person in the water, where they likely would be based on tide, based on wind, and based on other environmental factors. Decker stresses the importance of a life jacket. Just want to reinforce the, the importance of wearing a life jacket um, at all times when, when you're in the water, especially in Alaska in October. Michelle White, your Alaska Link, Anchorage. So important to wear your life jacket. Now, the U.S. Coast Guard says that the search area covered two to three miles north and two to three miles south of downtown Anchorage across Cook Inlet to Port McKenzie. The Pebble Limited Partnership has laid off a number of employees less than a month after the proposed mining project lost one of its main investors. ABC Alaska's Montana Jeffers has more on this story. Yes, Stevie, of Pebble's seven or so direct employees, a number of them were let go and given severance packages last week. Reports say about 50 contracts will also be suspended or just cut early because of the Anglo-American pulling out the nearly $550 million they were going to invest. Pebble had announced an estimate of $80 million in work that needed to be done this year and continues to evaluate that number. Officials say the mine developer has been the leading employer in the Bristol Bay region for the last decade and with about 150 residents working for the project during the summer in 2012. The project has already faced backlash for the alleged harm it could cause to the wildlife in the area. However, Pebble says they are not abandoning the project, just taking a step back. Looking forward is that the Pebble prospect and development of a mine at Pebble remains an important project for Alaska. It is on state of Alaska land with the potential to provide thousands of jobs and hundreds of millions, if not billions, in economic activity for, for decades to come. And our remaining partner, Northern Dynasty, has indicated they have the the resources to advance the project and is actively looking for additional partners to help keep the project moving forward. And we if the project is complete, it will be the biggest pit mine in North America. Thanks, Montana. That's ABC Alaska's Montana Jeffers reporting for us tonight. And the government shutdown could have a massive impact on local crabbers and the entire crab season. As some fishermen prepare to set a course from Seattle for the Bering Sea, they're now not sure what they'll face. Our affiliate in Seattle has the story. 
With just more than a week to go until the short crab season, the political wind in the nation's capital makes for rough seas ahead. We're being caught in the middle of a, of a partisan battle that we didn't start, and unfortunately, we're the collateral damage in. The federal shutdown means the permit process has come to a halt at the worst time. The personnel who are in charge of issuing those permits are furloughed. So until those furloughed workers are allowed back on the job, we can't be issued the crab, and then we legally can't catch it. We can't even set our gear until we get the proper permits. Some of the vessels are already in Alaska and ready to go. Some are in transit or still in Seattle and will soon leave. The shutdown could cost the crabbing industry tens of millions of dollars. Workers are still paid and fed while they wait to ship out. And there's a lot of money on the line with king crab and canneries and boats and fuel and all that stuff. And it goes beyond that. The welders, the shipyards, the, the mechanics, the provisioners, I mean, the you know, the multiplier effect is going to also be significant. There's also concern they'll miss the international market's holiday season, but there is hope that something will give so they can get the word go. I think by the time we get there, everything should be worked out. Now, we've been on strike before for, you know, weeks at a time in the past, so I don't really think it's going to be an issue. Russ Bowen, KMO 4 News. And in other news, Alaska State Troopers and the Coast Guard are searching for a man after his boat capsized in, capsized in Deep Bay near Cordova. Reports say the man was 33 years old and was last seen swimming to shore when he went under water Saturday night. Another man was also on board the nearly six-foot boat. He made it to shore and called for help. Both of the men were not wearing life jackets. And workers have begun packing up the vast collection of the Alaska State Museum ahead of time before next year's move to a storage facility. The vault and the items will remain in a climate-controlled facility currently under construction until a new state library's archives and museum building is up in Juneau. Reports say a team of museum professionals and volunteers are preparing for the move. Ellen Carley is responsible for figuring out how to pack things up. The process involves opening every drawer in every storage unit and devising a plan for each item. Let's check in now with Ryan as he has a quick look at your weather forecast. Hi, Ryan. Hi, Stevie. How are you doing this evening? I'm well. I'm battening down my hatches. I believe we have a storm brewing. We do have a little bit of a storm brewing. Moving over the southwest corner of the state, going to bring some 